that's the biggest thing for me is just being passionate about it. And if you're not, then that's not for you. All right, everyone, Visions to Venture uh, season two. Um, like I mentioned before, I have great guests coming in and, you know, more uh, just motivation and just so much to learn from all these guests that I have on. So I want to introduce you to Peyton. Um, and she's a photographer, uh, but she's also, I feel like, much more than, you know, a photographer than an entrepreneur herself. So I'm going to let her introduce her business, what she does, and go from there. Hello, I'm Peyton. I uh, I do photography. I do all kinds of photography. I definitely have some favorites, but I've I've been doing portraits. I do newborn, family, weddings, and I also do boudoir, which is my favorite kind of photography. And yeah, I just really enjoy. Enjoy some more than others, but I do it all. So, <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, that's uh, I really don't, don't hardly hear so many photographers say boudoir because I know boudoir that's like more, I guess, uh, how would you say more special, more of that connection, right? With the yeah, or... so for those of you who don't know, boudoir photography is essentially like a very sexy and a personal kind of photography it's uh what i personally do is mainly just with women and we do like lingerie or we'll do like just with a white sheet or something and that uh is done for either your fiance before you get married or because you've been really working on your self-confidence or I've actually had others that you know have started working out and they've seen a lot of change in their body and they mm -hmm. really want to celebrate that and so they've decided to do a boudoir shoot with me. Wow I didn't know that I that's good that you mentioned that because I would never have thought like someone who's working out like hey you know what I feel comfortable I'm not saying that they shouldn't have feel comfortable before but like you know now that yeah. like, I want to show off you know this new me um so yeah, and thanks for <laughs> explaining what boudoir is because I know, for, like, I heard of it, but it's so like rare, you know, hearing photographers kind of like say that they do that. You know, it's mostly at weddings and and family and stuff like that. Um, but what inspired you to get into photography? So I had a friend who would always ask me to do photo shoots for her, just on like my phone, and one time I was like, hey, I want to try to edit them. So I did, um, I logged into her Lightroom account and I edited them and then I sent them to her and I'm like, how do you like these? And she was just so blown away and looking at them now, they were not that good, but, <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, wow, that was so good. And you're actually very natural at, you know, posing us and directing us and telling us what to do. And she said she usually doesn't know how to pose. And so she was kind of nervous about that, but um, said that she felt like I had an eye for it. And so I was like, yeah, maybe I could see myself becoming a photographer, which is something I'd never thought about before. And that was that was three years ago. Um, oh, wow. That's really that's. I thought you would have said like five, ten years, three years. That's no, like, <laughs> that's no. Really, yeah. It uh, it hasn't been that long, but it's definitely been an adventure. I've been pushing myself a lot. I've done a lot of research on the best ways to edit, like certain lighting and best ways to pose people. And I personally like a very natural look, not like, hey, we're just all standing in a line and smiling. It's more um very organic where you're like playing with your kids or you're playing with your hair or just something like that uh i can't think of the word right now but there's a specific word for it <laughs> it's funny you remember just throw it out that out of nowhere just be like this is what it is and i'm like okay. yes I will. <laughs> <laughs> um and i like to hear because i've had another you know i think uh, another photographer but i like to see kind of the what you you know 
some like i've the last person was like more of a not too edited but for you it's more of like the natural kind of like as is as as the moment is right for the mm -hmm. photography so i like to hear different um unique ways that it kind of separates you from other photographers um so repeat that question one more time no no no. i'm i'm just stating because i like how you i like how you have your own kind of like set like oh i want, I want the more natural oh so yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't a question it was, oh, okay yeah, yeah yeah no no i, I was like asked, i'm not sure what yeah. he's asking <laughs> no i just like to hear kind of the difference you know like kind of this is showing who you are as a photographer what you do as a photographer you know and i really like the whole um you know natural state of it um and so when you go back, like you mentioned before, you mentioned like you have when you first started three years ago, what can you say like your editing skills or what has changed from then since then? Um, so much. <laughs> I don't know where to start with that. So I started really, so I bought a camera after my daughter was born and I started taking pictures of her. I tried to set them up professionally. I got um, I got lights and backdrops. And yes, I am one of those moms that posts their baby a million times and <laughs> I don't regret it. And so <laughs> I wanted to have some good professional photos of her done. And so I thought I might as well do that myself. And through working, with her i learned how to work with children when they're wiggly and that's also part of why i don't like very like very posed photos mm -hmm. because kids just aren't gonna pose and so i slowly came into this okay i think i like more of a natural more of an organic look um i don't like super heavily edited i like it to look light which i mean all of my photos there's like hours and hours and hours of work that goes into each one of them but it doesn't look um it doesn't look fake it doesn't mm -hmm. look uh just over over edited like i don't do any photoshop on oh can you hear me i can hear you okay your picture is frozen um, oh, is it? Oh, great. <laughs> I don't do any Photoshop. Like, uh, of course, I'll edit, you know, zits or scratches or stuff like that out. But I won't make somebody skinnier. I won't um, do any of that. I can edit, like, things out of it. Like, one time I edited somebody's uh, baby's bottle out of the photo that they uh, had asked to be edited out. And... Mm -hmm. So stuff like that I can do, but I don't like the body modification, whereas I didn't know what I wanted to do yeah. uh, in the very beginning. And you just, as you go, you kind of figure it out. So it wasn't like you took, like, uh, you weren't in photography when you were in high school or anything like that. It's just like you mm -hmm. just got into it and just with the editing and all that, you just figured out on your own. Yeah. So that this was actually a passion I found. I say later in life, but I was still in my 20s. So <laughs> um, I I just came to love it as time went on, as I, you know, decide, like I could nitpick what I liked from certain photographers and what I didn't like, and I kind of made it into my own. And, you know, we'd had, I had a lot of, photos done as a child my mom took me all the time to get my picture done and I just there were certain things that I didn't like and things that I did like looking back on the photos and so I've kind of um taken taken all of that taken all of like my own feedback and mm -hmm. created my own brand I guess okay um and when you mentioned like editing is it does it make it, uh, does it add some difficult when you add Photoshop to it? Like, let's say, like, for example, you said the bottle, like, does that add like a, 
a crazy amount of time or is it something that i mean i guess now before you would have been like oh my gosh how am i going to do this to now like where i'm sure you can edit right away or how does that work with with the whole editing like a bottle does that add more time to it so it does it adds a lot of time actually <laughs> it it takes probably an hour or two just for like that little spot whereas um and that's just for me there could be other photographers out there that are like really good at you know editing stuff like that out super quick but i now that i do photography myself i can notice photoshop on others uh, <laughs> photography pages <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like oh that just looks so bad like it'll look like little pixels are uh, moved where they're not supposed to be or like it's a little fuzzy and it, then you can tell something's been edited out and i hate that look and so <laughs> i try to make it look as natural as possible and that's why i take so long on it oh my gosh that's crazy you like that looks fake it's fake yep <laughs> i'm like that there was something right there and <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness it's good to like see what you know you see like as a photographer because for me i'm like oh that looks that looks cute that looks nice Nothing's yeah. done with that, you know? well that's why i feel like photographers get lazy because people usually don't notice but when you when you have been working on it for so long and really nitpicking yourself you kind of notice it in other people's work and you're like mm, i can tell <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh what with with your journey that as a photographer, what like lessons have you learned? I mean, I know it's been I would say short, right? Three years, but yeah. Um, what lessons have you feel like you learned that's kind of uh growing you into the photographer that you are at now at the moment? So I learn a little something every time I do a shoot. I would say that I will always be learning like we can always learn and grow as we um continue with our passions and you'll never be perfect at anything um i strive to be the best version of the photographer that i want to be but yeah i would say every time i do a photo shoot i i learn so much more and whether that be posing someone or you know where the hand goes or making sure there's phones out of pockets or gum out of mouths and mm. um just how to like a big one for me is how to deal with impatient toddlers or crying babies because <laughs> that is the biggest challenge when they are just screaming and crying and it, to make those photos look good and not like they're being tortured is yeah. important <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i would like to think i mean i would if i was the parent i'd be like you know what i'm done let's just reschedule something or let's yep. just, you know i can't do it um so i would you know then on those photographer side it's just like oh my gosh like how do i just get through mm -hmm. this without you know just you know having <laughs> to just like hey you know what yeah. let's we're so, done this is schedule a big thing for me like something i've learned through each photo shoot is one photo shoot i learned bring little snacks like fruit snacks or something that of course mm -hmm. i asked the parent first if they mm -hmm. can have them but like it's a good like bribe yeah and i know some parents don't like bribes but you get desperate and then like I'll bring toys for babies that make noise. So I'll have the camera right here and then I'll just like rattle yeah. um, like a toy or another time I learned to bring an extra blanket because I always have a blanket on a photo shoot so that you don't have to sit in the weeds and then learn to bring an extra blanket and a boppy, which is kind oh. of like half circle pillow that a lot of women use for nursing. Um, I use that to prop babies up and I put the blanket over it. So you can't really tell. Oh, but genius. <laughs> not a boppy, but they are. Yeah. And so just like little things like that to help set the stage. <laughs> yeah. 
and as you're mentioning boppy I, and uh i you know since i have a well, three month old now but oh, I, yeah. we've got a boppy this time and i'm just like oh my gosh why didn't we get this last time you know so, so amazing and great so convenient. <laughs> yeah and i even said him on there and he's just like calm where he, first he gets mm -hmm. fussy and then he just gets calm and sometimes he knocks out and i'm like all right cool you know yeah um but wow that's so much <laughs> to even think about um I know with the conversation we had, you know, uh, prior to you, you know, coming into the uh, podcast here, you mentioned the presence, like as far as social media, and you mm -hmm. said you, you know, it's been some time where I do add some, or I kind of like don't usually post. How um, how important is social media? Do you think as uh, not for a photographer, but also just you know anyone that wants to grow their business? Uh. I mean, social media is everything now. Like, if you don't have a social media, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, I mean, everybody has a social media. And everybody scrolls and everybody, you know, gets ads and sees all these different photographers. And that's really how I have built my business is my Instagram, my social media is my portfolio. And that's how people find me and that's how they, you know, they look through my work and decide, okay, I want to work with her or, okay, she's not my style. I don't want to work with her, which is fine. Mm. And you just have to be consistent with posting, which is what I was telling you that yeah. I need to be better at that. So hard. Um, and I think one of the biggest parts of having a social media for your business would be to pay attention to the algorithm at the moment because mm -hmm. it's always changing. So Instagram's algorithm used to be, you know, pictures and now they don't really push photos as much. They push reels. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I need to start working on making reels. So I learned how to make reels, like put putting pictures to music basically. And now it's very, um, specific reels. So they have to be shorter than six seconds. What? <laughs> which, yeah, which is what is, uh, so I learn a lot of that from other people who post on Instagram. I follow a mm -hmm. lot of other photographers who help people learn how to gain followers. And yeah. so I pay attention to those kind of things and only pick trending songs yeah. to post with your reel that can only be six seconds it's all very specific but <laughs> like even the time of day you post the day of the week that you post it's kind of stressful <laughs> it is just trying to find that like that perfect mm -hmm. algorithm that's going to work and like you mentioned before i i feel like it changes so often that you're like oh i got it down and then well you yep. know we're not doing this anymore now it's like yeah. longer content you know Yes. And that's what I heard. So like hearing it from the photographer. And I also, I guess for me, thinking Reels was like actual video, but then you mentioned it's just like a slideshow, right? And mm -hmm. that can be considered a Reel? So what I do is I've found the most successful Reels will be when I take a video of the shoot that I'm doing. So of the background or of the model like standing with the background behind them and then show the, so it's essentially like before and after and then show the okay. pictures after. So um, a lot of my reels will be, I'll use my phone to like scan the landscape or the setup that we have. And then when, you know, the beat drops on the music that I have, <laughs> then I'll start slow showing the slideshow. Well. I found that that keeps that keeps people more hooked because it's like the before and after like wow look what she created from this landscape instead of just that's a nice picture yeah which i like that i do this because i'm learning so much you know because for me i'm like i'll just add some music to this reel here yep. here you go <laughs> but it's just like you're more into like wait till the beat drops i'll put the photo here and then it's just makes it more wow yep. And, and it gets me thinking like six seconds, I guess that might be the attention of a person, right? Like the attention span or something like yeah. what catches your attention that first six seconds and then what leads on to that. Yeah. So 
um, it's good to see kind of how that develops, you know, because I'm still in that learning. I mean, I'm always in the learning process. So figuring that out, like what's trending, but also seeing how everyone else is doing it differently. And yeah. you're also doing the same thing. You're like, okay, these photographers are doing this or this person is doing this. I'm going to follow or, or do it better some, some way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about doing it better, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, oh my gosh, just so much. Uh, what can you say as far as like, has it, and excuse me if I kind of, uh, might be like a, a recurring question or something that I said before, but, um, within the three years, have you feel like there was like a big challenge in your career that you just decided, you know, this is it for me, or was it something that you're like, I still got to push through because this is my passion? So... I mean, it's hard because I don't have a lot of experience because it's only been three years, but I think something that's hard is not everybody will love your work. Mm -hmm. And now I haven't had anybody, you know, be like angry with me or um, say like, hey, I don't like this or something like that, but I have had someone be very resistant to me like posing them and telling them like hey now we're gonna go over here and you're gonna pose like this and then i'll take a couple shots and she's like no i think i want to do it like this and so that can be like really hard on both of our parts because then uh with that specific shoot i felt like in a funk kind of because yeah i couldn't you know, be creative and work on my, um, you know, my brand and help her to have the most flattering uh, poses. And this specific person was doing what they thought would look nice. And some of it did, but a lot of it was, um, let's just say, I know how to pose people. Yeah. And you can't see yourself sometimes and so it that one was pretty frustrating for me and i'm like i don't know if i want to do this to get people like that again because it's it is hard working with people it's yeah. i mean you're working with people that just find you off of social media so it could be anybody and they are the client who is paying you and so you like if they want to pose themselves, then they get to pose themselves. And if your photos don't turn out great, then they don't turn out great. And that is something that was hard for me because I didn't feel completely satisfied sending those photos to her mm -hmm. when I wasn't able to pose her. But, you know, yeah, you live and you learn. <laughs> <laughs> is that something like uh, you, you just kind of pass on? I mean, you with that, you know, client you just be like next time going around you just like I have a different photographer kind of you know not to be rude but you kind of like I have a different photographer that kind of meets more of your needs is that how you would go for deal with that type of personality so, I mean during that particular shoot I couldn't just like say hey you should go to dinner <laughs> we were already there taking the pictures and I didn't want to just bail on her um but if she ever asked me in the future I mean, it's really up to the discretion of the photographer. So I think I personally, I don't know what I would do, honestly, because she hasn't asked me to do them again, but she has like reached out to me again and talked mm -hmm. to me. And so yeah. I don't think it's impossible for that situation to happen. <laughs> I, yeah. I honestly don't know. I don't think that I would because it was a very interesting situation mm -hmm. so i would probably just say like you know i don't know if i am the particular photographer that is your style because she was going for a very specific style that is not me and that's why it was so difficult for me because she was very like um vintage almost and I'm not, I'm very modern and clean. Yeah. And so it was, um, whereas she didn't tell me that it was going to be a vintage shoot beforehand. So that was interesting.
but yeah i mean and i asked this because i feel like as the you know on the other end for me it's like i've been through a, uh i would say a few five photographers and i mean for me i don't really care i'm like i'm just yeah. taking a photo and get it over with and whatever but then when it comes to like the pose it is kind of i've started to get more of like this is the same pose i want to do something different you know yeah that i mean that very much <laughs> i feel like <laughs> is the guy's perspective <laughs> yeah because the wives are the ones typically in the photo shoots that are like okay make sure like did i look good in that photo does my hair look okay and then the guys just stand there and they're like just pose me and <laughs> and <laughs> So I feel like that's a very stereotypical man thing. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> but no, no, no. Um, you're good. And I, I mean, sometimes they're easier to work with because they'll just let you do what you're going to do. And, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's always a work in progress and every family is a different uh situation and a different you know they're different people to work with so every photo shoot will be completely different and that's just something that you have to adapt to yeah that's awesome geez <laughs> thanks for you know letting me <laughs> i know <laughs> i'm over here maybe i'm different i'm just kidding <laughs> no you're not <laughs> oh well thanks <laughs> oh my gosh um is is there uh would you say like uh I mean, I, can do you can you say like or give us one key to success at, to success as a photographer that you that you think of like? Uh, passion would be my biggest. Uh, the biggest key for me is that if you don't have a passion for it, you'll probably fizzle out, or you're not going to, you know, post as often which i i need to post more often but it's just not as consistent like there are a lot of photographers out there that will just stop on their social media completely and then their business just like kind of dies out because mm -hmm. you know they're not staying updated with it or um, and it's really hard especially specifically in utah there are a lot of photographers and so you need to be confident and passionate and have fun with what you're doing because they're not going to book with you again if you're just this like grumpy person yeah. <laughs> and you don't seem like you love what you're doing. And yeah, so that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing for me is just being passionate about it. And if you're not, then that's not for you. I have this lighting oh. thing. See, I, I was told because I have glasses on, I can't because I got this little one. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but it's like you can't have it directly on your glasses, so it can't show on the video. Whatever, I don't care. I just have these lights <laughs> on. Just uh, have um, it coming down <laughs> from above you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I have bigger ones, but this one will do. Oh, whatever. It's good. I think my lighting's good. It's Let me fine. double check. Eh, it's all good. Um, all right. Peyton, uh, we're back, everyone. We had uh, some crazy storm and just perfect to go with the whole vibe. I'm just kidding, the whole vibe here. <laughs> Torrential rains. Um, yeah. It's, you're like, oh, it's my first podcast. And then it's just like, boom, yep. power out, went outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized I had my mic on and I'm just like, yeah, she's probably hearing me like screaming, help. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, but that would have been entertaining. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. okay, we're back. Um, okay, since oh my goodness, where are you? I lost you. Okay. Um, okay. As sorry, let me refresh. I'm like so. Can you hear me? Are you out again? Yes. Yeah. Peyton. Okay, cool. <clears throat> okay, and action. Um so like so okay, um 
<clears throat> oh wait, pause. So what if... I remember what we were talking about before. Okay. <laughs> cool. We were talking about um you said what's the key to Oh yes. Entrepreneur ship or something and I said passion. Yeah, okay. okay. Passion. There you go. Any more to add to passion? No. <laughs> 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 um, what like exciting projects do you have? I know you, I saw you post, I, I guess that just can be something that you posted on your social media, but what exciting projects, um, any collaborations that you got going on? So I have a collaboration with another boudoir photographer that I'm working on and that'll be really fun. I like to be super creative with those ones because I feel like my, my main Instagram, my main page, I can have like, I want very natural and you know, outdoorsy or the city look or stuff like that. But I can get really crazy with boudoir shoots. Like I uh, did a disco theme one time. I did, um, you know, I've done a couple floral baths and we did a kitchen theme, strawberries and chocolate. Mm. And so I am currently working on one that's going to be a little bit more gothic maybe halloween themed which seems fun i just i'm trying to incorporate it into my style on my instagram because that's another thing that you have to pay attention to is being consistent with your style and your mm -hmm. editing and so i can't like make it really mm -hmm. dark and spooky because that's not what the rest of my page looks like and so you just got to make sure that the fun projects that you work on still go with the vibe of, you know, your, um, your page and your product. Well, so since it doesn't go with your page, how do you incorporate that? Is it just like, uh, you make it as a theme for that, <clears throat> for that week or how can you incorporate something that's not within your, your branding of your photography? So my specific, um, page talking about my boudoir page, yes. it's very like light and airy, pretty light colors, a lot of whites and, um, some pastels and the way that you would incorporate a photo shoot like that into your Instagram would either be, um, make the uh what is it called the picture that shows on your page of the real the profile oh, okay make yeah. that the picture that goes with the rest of your page and then you can make the real however you want to but the picture that shows on your page needs to match with the rest of your page so i would maybe do you know the whoever the model is that i work with dressed up in it's probably going to be black with like either a black veil or like kind of a halloweeny vibe i would just do a picture up against maybe like a white wall or like a lighter photo and if yeah. none of the colors match my page at all then i just go for a black and white okay just so it doesn't throw off the rest of the the yeah. rest of the page um with the boudoir you mentioned um you know kind of like different like uh you know goth and all this is that like requested from the client or is that kind of like no are you able so, to have any input in that or how does that work so <clears throat> what i will do for my creative shoots is i can either post on my page on my story and just say hey i'm looking for a model for this and put like some ideas of what the photo shoot's going to look like on the story and then people can you know sign up for it or i will reach out to somebody specifically and say hey here's my idea are you cool with that oh. so that would be my um 
my kind of fun and creative shoot. Whereas if somebody reached out to me, it would be whatever they were wanting. And if they said, hey, can you come up with a few fun ideas? I want to do something fun. Then I could suggest, hey, why don't we do this? Mm. Which is funny because I've seen those uh, interesting, sorry, that I've seen those uh, posts from photographers like, hey, I got this going on. But I never actually thought it's because they're trying to go with some type of a you know, something, a theme or, or something that they wanted yeah. to start, you know, so now it makes all sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Well, it's not, it's not only like a theme. It's just like that goes along with yeah. that passion that I was yeah. talking about earlier, just like to have fun with it every once in a while. Cause you'll do all these shoots for clients and then be thinking like, as a photographer, you are very creative and you're constantly thinking about like what to do next and what fun things could I incorporate into my portfolio or my page. And so those are just kind of the things that I come up with. And that's the one that I'm working on currently is the uh, the kind of gothic um, Halloween styled one. And I come up with them months beforehand because it takes a long time to you know, find all the props and find the space we're going to shoot in, find the model, get the date set, and then take the pictures, sort out the pictures and edit them, and then post them. And by that time, it'll be around Halloween. Okay, cool. Yeah, <clears throat> that's pretty looking for, for, I mean, for those projects, and I guess just growing your type of, uh, um, you know, the skills on that as well. So, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm like with everything just happened before, like it's, you know, so trash. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Almost <traumatic>. died, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, What uh, advice would you like to give to, you know, uh, a photographer starting off and then also, uh, you know, that can also be related to entrepreneurs or just, just photographers? I would say have fun and do what you love. Just make it fun or else you're going to get burnt out really quick because the editing process takes a long time. Like the shooting is what's really fun. And then going home and spending hours sorting through photos, which will be hundreds of photos mm -hmm. and editing each and every one of them just takes a really long time and make sure you're not getting burnt out and have fun and be open to feedback because that was my biggest thing when I first started is I would text, you know, a bunch of my friends. I have some photographer friends. I would text them and say, Hey, is the lighting or the coloring off in this photo? And if they would say yes, then I would adjust it and send it back and say, Hey, does this look better? Just so that I could, train my eye for color mm. so be open to um you know asking other people hey does this look weird because there's definitely a point where you'll be editing and you'll just get burnt out and things start to look funky yeah like when you look at a word for a really long time and it starts to look like it's not spelled right but it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it gets and that way with like coloring um, so I will just take a break, leave for a few hours, and then come back to editing and and fix it. So just, yeah. I guess those are my main things is have fun and be open to feedback. Yeah. I, has it been to like where you have photographers coming to you and, and also asking for you feedback? Um, uh, or just still, you know, like, how would you take it now if someone comes up to you and you're like, hey, they're like, I need feedback. How does this look? Yeah. So the thing with that is all these different photographers have very different styles. So I have one friend that has a very similar style to me that will like shoot back and forth photos and say, hey, does this look weird? Like, is there anything you would change or adjust? Um, but quite a few of my other friends have like very, very different color styles. And so I'd be like, I don't know. I think it looks good, but 
yeah, it's just one of those um, your preference kind of things. And so when I would ask people for help, it would be people that know my style and know what I'm going mm. for. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was just like asking any any photographer. and But it, I mean, it, it makes sense to find that one that's kind of similar close to yours to mm -hmm. make sure it has that vision that you want. Yeah. Um, and where, so I'd like to save this time for um, the guests to kind of, you know, for you to share just where they, where someone can find you, your social media is just everything that you want to put out there. Um, so this is your time, share anything else that you want um, and plug in everything that you, or, you know, everyone can look at you, at your work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll make sure to include the actual, uh, you know, if for any reason okay. it's incorrect, I'll make sure to include the actual. Uh, okay, so um, I don't need to spell it. You you can spell it, but I'm saying for some reason, okay. if you feel like, oh my gosh, I got it wrong, I'm always I always like to include on the uh, description of the episode. Okay. The um, the links and stuff where they can also you know find your okay. your profile. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So don't worry about uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> And my uh, boudoir page is boudoir.hout, H-A-U-T-E. And boudoir is spelled B-O-U-D-O-I-R. And that's where you can find me. And just send me a DM on there. And I would love to work with you. Awesome. Well, uh, Peyton, I pretty much appreciate you. Can you hear me? Or am I cutting off? I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> There's so much editing going to happen. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I appreciate you uh, taking your time with, you know, being a guest on the po podcast episode um, and just sharing, you know, what you do, um, just stuff that other photographers can look out and, you know, your upcoming projects and everything that goes in with as a photographer. Just want to thank you for sharing all that, <clears throat> and I want to apologize for you know just <laughs> all the internet and everything that went happen. But <laughs> um, you know, I hope that you were able to share what you could, and then uh, I would also like to you know if later there's stuff that comes up that we can do like an update to um, you as a guest and anything that changes. So. I appreciate your time. Thank you for all that you do. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Um, and I'll be going ahead and posting this uh, podcast episode in August. But please, everyone, look out for Peyton, um, her profile. And, yeah, thank you for your time. All right. Thank you.